So uh, let me announce the first contribution for today, which is um, authored by the group of Klaus Röder from Braunschweig, Germany. The authors are Ann-Kathrin Reichler, Felix Gabriel, Frederick Timmann, Jochen Steil, and Klaus Röder. They are affiliated to the Institute of Machine Tools and Production Technology, as well as Institute of Robotics and Process Control at the Technical University in Braunschweig. And we are looking forward to their presentation entitled An Architecture for Automation and Mail-Based Constraint Modeling and or Orchestration of Incremental Manufacturing. The screen is yours. Welcome everyone to the presentation of our paper An Architecture for Automation ML-Based Constraint Modeling and Orchestration of Incremental Manufacturing. My name is Ann-Kathrin and I'm a research assistant at the Institute of Machine Tools and Production Technology. The rising demand of customized products leads to increasing number of variants per component. This development challenges traditional linear interlinked manufacturing concepts like injection molding. The non-linear production concept, incremental manufacturing, offers the possibility to overcome current limitations of traditional manufacturing concepts. You can see the machine setup on the left. The robot-based manufacturing concept, incremental manufacturing, uses pre-products which are assembled, measured and in the end finalized by additive and subtractive manufacturing steps. This concept leads to lower investment cost and a high amount of flexibility for serious production. The five most important flexibility aspects in the context of incremental manufacturing are the following. Product flexibility is characterized by a fast and cost efficient integration of new products. This could be guaranteed by the use of robots with a scalable workspace. Volume flexibility from small to medium batch sizes can be achieved through the extendability of the production concept incremental manufacturing. Further aspects are machine versus and operation flexibility, which we will have a closer look in a few minutes. The new gain flexibility aspect affects all the range from the product design in the beginning until the real manufacturing in the end. The biggest challenge is to manage the new flexibility. This presentation, I will, in this presentation, I will present you an architecture to deal with the high degree of freedom caused by the flexibility of incremental manufacturing. First of all, I would like to present the problem description in the context of incremental manufacturing. Afterwards, I will present a brief overview of the state of the art concerning process modeling language and automation ML. Afterwards, I will introduce an architecture which meets the worked out requirements. And I will end up with a short conclusion and an outlook. In the context of incremental manufacturing, the hardware neutral description of production processes and especially the interdependencies between the different production steps are one of the major challenges. The resulting limitations based on the interdependencies from the product as well as from the process point of view will, we will call constraints. Concerning constraints, the main challenge is to find an understandable language so that it is possible to communicate the information forward and backward in the manufacturing planning process. Only with the communication of existing constraints, an efficient and flexible production is possible. When we have a look at the three manufacturing strategies in the figure, we can dedicate three of the before mentioned flexibility aspects, which can be used to meet the tolerance field. The tolerance field is an example of a process constraint which we have to fulfill during the production. First, we can use different workstations to manufacture a part. Furthermore, we can use different manufacturing strategies to build up a part. For example, a grinding process could be used instead of a milling process. Furthermore, we can dedicate operation sequence flexibility. We can change the order of the process steps when you have a look at the red and green marked manufacturing strategies. Today, we have to decide during the process planning which kind of manufacturing strategy we would like to use, only based on the process point of view, without taking into account the cell capacity. 
One possibility to overcome the limitation of curing process planning approaches is to integrate a new co uh, level called orchestration, which is able to manage, based on the process constraints, knowledge, the execution time, the execution resource, and the execution sequence of a manufacturing step. The orchestration level is closer to the execution level and it is able to get important data from the real manufacturing process faster than the process planning level. In the following ring, we will have a closer look at the advantages of an orchestration management level. When we have a look at the figure on the left, we can see incremental manufacturing is a new manufacturing strategy, which is, which is not standardized, but the planning is based on process knowledge. This high level of process knowledge is the only way to control the complex manufacturing processes. Often the knowledge is not available or cost intensive. Uh, therefore, in the long term, incremental manufacturing should move along a Pareto front, depending on whether a higher standardization or higher process knowledge is available. Further advantages which can be achieved by the implementation of an orchestration level, we can see on the right. Today, we only generate process optimal plans without taking into account the cell and the resources. With orchestration, it is possible to also take into account the cell point of view in the planning process. So in the end, through balancing the, uh, the effort put into both process planning and orchestration, it is possible to efficiently implement the flexibility of incremental manufacturing and to establish a management level pro production related constraints. To make this possible, we need to set up an explicit representation of constraints to efficiently implement an orchestration level to use the flexibility aspect of incremental manufacturing. In the following, we will have a brief look at current process modeling languages especially Automation ML. Today, round about 17 different process modeling languages are available. Well known are PSL, PLC or PetriNet. For cross-modeling from design up to manufacturing, which is important for us, UML and SysML are the most important languages. The huge variety of languages and the missing standardization makes it hard to select a task-specific language. Automation modeling language, short RML, overcome the limitation because it is standardized and it is possible to abstract processes, resources and products, especially their interactions. We will have a closer look at RML. RML is easily extendable to external software and other domains, so it is used from product until control design. The object-oriented language, already known from CX, is threefold divided into process, product and resource. Process, product and resource can be connected with a PPR connector to describe the interaction between each other. By the extension of IML with skills, it is possible to present resource-based dependencies and to implement the execution viewpoint. Skills describes the capability of a system, skill requirement assigned to a product describes the formalization of a product, and skill recipe is assigned to a process and describes how skills must be executed to fulfill the skill requirements. The presented approaches describe uh, and description will be used in the following as a basic language for an architecture for automation ML. Now I would like to discuss requirements for an architecture to implement incremental manufacturing. The biggest question is how must the architecture and the process planning and orchestration be designed in order to guarantee a high level of production flexibility while mastering the rising process flexibility at the same time. We identify five requirements which must be fulfilled by the architecture. First of all, a fast and easy reconfiguration for an efficient optimization of processes must be possible. On this way, newly gained knowledge can be directly integrated into the production of a component. Another important point 
is the representation of process-related constraints. The description of the manufacturing process must allow the mapping of specific constraints of incremental manufacturing. Here, the transfer of temporal and qualitative constraints must also be made possible in addition to binary data. Furthermore, the implementation of flexibility scopes in the constraints is necessary in order to achieve a higher flexibility for the entire production system. Not only the definition of tolerance ranges, but also the specification of a process window for the timed execution of a process support the flexibility. As we defined in the problem description, a separation of process planning and process, plans, process execution is important because the current state of the production system is only easily available at the orchestration level. The last requirement which should be fulfilled is the adaptivity to changing hardware components. Once processes have been described, it must be possible to carry out processes by changed hardware. Only on this way, the machine flexibility can be guaranteed. Taking into account the defined requirements in architecture, which combines process planning and the subsequent orchestration was developed. First of all, we will have a look at the structure of the architecture. The architecture is based on the modeling language IML and additional open source libraries. For process execution, the orchestration reads the task execution list and starts to operate it from top to down. The task execution list contains a description of process, product and resource and the interaction between. Based on the event measurement, the orchestration can stop the execution of the predefined processes and can decide, based on the resource status, if another process step can be used to finish the product in order to optimize the capacity of the entire plant. The new process step is added to the execution list. The process description will be taken from the process planning. In the end, the added process will be executed. Based on the demonstrated general mode of the operation of the architecture, we will have a closer look on the fulfillment of the predefined requirement. Fast and easy adaption of process description for efficient process optimization can be assured by the use of classes and instances. By this processes can be described by using the definition of resources and products, which are connected via PPR connectors and describe all production related constraints. You can see it on the left. The second requirement is met by the storage of binary constraints information in the product description by using a certain uh, criteria range for tolerance or mechanical strain. The already existing skill approach is augmented. The implementation of flexibility scopes, the third requirement, is fulfilled by the architecture by formulating a constraint-specific criteria in the process description. As you can see on the right, the interlayer temperature, for example, is formulated as a temperature range. So the orchestration can decide at what time the process step will be executed in the time range. This scheduling of process-based uh, of processes based on constraint-specific criteria ranges we can call constraint management. The pre-planned possible production sequences are stored in the production description, but the execution time of the process is scheduled by the orchestration level and not by the process planning. Furthermore, correction strategies are also defined by the orchestration as long as they are in the predefined criteria range. Functions of objects can be described by a role class in advanced. When a component is physically implemented, the component will be arranged hierarchically and required communication links are set based on the part idea, as we can see on the right. I would like to end up with a short summary and an outlook for further development steps. In summary, requirements for an architecture to manage flexibility and related constraints are set up. Furthermore, an architecture which integrates the orchestration level and formulates constraints in Automation ML was built up. 
In this way, it is possible to formulate constraint-specific criteria ranges in addition to binary constraints and help to establish new value creation patterns for nonlinear production systems. In the future, the proposed architecture should be implemented, especially the implementation and the role of orchestration will be clarified. With this, I would like to end up my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me or one of my colleagues. Thank you very much for your presentation, Anne Katrin. We are going to have a short um, question and answer session with Anne Katrin within the next few minutes. That's why I'm just uh, looking to our technical support. Anne Katrin is online, right? Hi, Anne Katrin, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Great. Um, so I have Two questions based, uh, based on your paper. Uh, first of them is, um, could you give us a bit more detail about your uh, approach for process planning, please? Okay, yeah, thank you very much for the short introduction, first of all. And yeah, I can give a brief introduction about what we do in the production planning approach. Uh, we start to set up own process planning approach for incremental manufacturing where we would like to um, combine process planning on the one side with uh, the design side on the other hand. So we have both in one. We have process planning based on, for example, the process sequence and also, for example, we describe during our process planning, for example, what kind of or what temperature we need for our next step, for example, like an imprinting process step. So these we define during our process planning. We also define during our process planning the design of our product, what fits best to our incremental manufacturing production strategy. Okay, thank you. Um, since I also follow your uh, research fields, um, I also know that you have a um, huge laboratory with a lot of modern equipment. Could you give us a bit more information about your laboratory equipment and also the whole um, idea behind um, the physical um, approach what you have? Okay, yeah, first we uh, have a huge um, yeah, lab here. Uh, we set up this year and it's a combination of the three different robot types. We have a robot uh, who's uh, who able to print additive manufactured parts of the pad, the same for plastic parts, and we have a third robot which is equipped with some building process. Mm -hmm. So then when we have built up products, the surface of not so smooth, so we have a milling process in the end to smooth the surface. And the overall idea of our lab is not to use only additive manufacturing processes and not on the other hand only, for example, injection molding processes. We would like to combine those. We would like to use pre-produced products, for example, from injection molding, and finalize these products by additive and subtractive manufacturing steps in the end. So we are able to produce in one cell uh, a lot of different variants of a product only with one cell setup. So we can reduce the costs for our products and we also can increase the variety of products. Thank you. Um, and do you have also some industrial applications on your lab? Yeah, it's, um, yeah we start to uh, set up some industrial um, yeah. Scenarios, for example, mm -hmm. uh, we have collaboration uh, with the automotive industry, for example. We thought about to build up battery trays, for example, to have only one pre-produced uh, battery tray, and we can uh, individualize, for example, the infill of the battery tray, for example, for small cars like an e up and for larger cars like an, um, yeah, like an. A crafter or something like this. So we are able to have different sizes in our machine for a battery tray. This is one application for example. Thank, thank you very much. Um, thank you for your time and hope to yeah. see you soon. Thank you. Bye.
So thanks again for your contribution to the team from Technical University of Braunschweig in Germany.